today we're going to take a look at the Shars indicator to see if it's even worth the meager purchase price of $11.95. This indicator has one inch range and a resolution of one thousandth of an inch. For these tests I'm going to compare the measurements that I read off the indicator while measuring the height of my HDT carbide gauge blocks. These gauge blocks have an average height error of something around a couple millionths of an inch for the blocks below four inches in height. These gauge blocks were calibrated way back in 1986, but for these purposes I'm sure they're fine. There are no major scratches or other obvious signs of wear. They have a mirror finish, so I'm hoping that any damage would be somewhat easy to see. I will also be checking the accuracy of a bunch of other dial indicators I picked up on eBay as well, for a total of 12. I will be providing a link for the data in an Excel spreadsheet format in the link below this video. Just to be sure that I don't have an unusual Shars indicator, I've purchased a second one to test as well. I also have purchased a Shars 1 inch range indicator with 1 ten thousandth of an inch resolution to see how it fares. This indicator was more expensive, costing $59.95 instead of the $11.95 that one of the Shars 1000th resolution indicators cost. I am sure that many of you are already thinking that there are potential problems with tests like this, so here are a few that I've come up with. 1. The temperature of my garage is far from steady and certainly not 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 Celsius, the environment my gauge blocks are qualified for. The coefficient of expansion for tungsten carbide is approximately 3.9 millionths of an inch per inch of material per degree Fahrenheit and chromium carbide is about 6.3. I do not know which form of carbide my blocks are made out of, so I will go with the worst case spec of 6.3 millions of inch per inch per degree Fahrenheit. I have a weather station that reported the outside temperature to be approximately 86 degrees Fahrenheit, so let's estimate that my garage will be 90 with both doors open. This would make the temperature above 68 to be plus 22 degrees Fahrenheit. All of the blocks are an inch or less, except in one case where I tested a 2 inch indicator. So the expansion for the 1 inch scenario would be a lot less than 6.3 times 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 138.6 millionths of an inch, or approximately 1.4 ten thousandths of an inch. Note that the blocks are not an inch thick, so this value is definitely high. This suggests that my largest block should read less than 1.00014 inches in height. I think that for the most part, we can ignore temperature expansion as a significant cause of error. However, if I see a bunch of blocks measuring noticeably bigger than the stated size, we might have to revisit this source of error. Also for the indicators that are accurate to a ten thousandth of an inch, this could be an issue. So figure this information into the, re into the results for those indicators. 2. I am going to estimate all dial readings to the next order of magnitude, power of 10, by attempting to interpret the needle position between lines on the dial. I realize that this is only a rough estimate, so take these values with a grain of salt. 3. Not all dial indicators I am going to test are new. As a matter of fact, only three of them are. Many are in mint condition, but I have no idea how well taken care of they were, as they came from eBay. However, it is important to remember that I am not trying to evaluate the quality of Michutoyo, Fowler, or Sterrett's dial indicators, only Shars. I provide the other tests just for your information and to satisfy my curiosity. After all, should we trust anything off eBay? Perhaps these results will give you a bit of insight. 4. Most tests involved only a single reading at a particular height. While this is true, and thus there are not a lot of data points for each height, I did double and triple check values that seemed off. I am aware that this is by no means a perfect methodology because some values that weren't strange might have simply been lucky one-offs. I was never attempting to do rigorous testing only to get some rough estimates of accuracy. By the way, the Shars 1000th indicators were actually tested several times because when I was collecting data I was not recording video, so I had to do a reshoot and thus a remeasurement. Also, I rechecked zero on the indicator before every new height test. Five. My surface plate is only grade B and was tested flat to better than 200 millionths of an inch or two ten thousandths of an inch. When measuring heights, I was careful not to move the height gauge so that each test would be in the same place on the surface plate. In addition, the footprint of each block is identical, so hopefully any surface plate anomalies are nulled out. 
I hope this will satisfy enough of you to make you curious as to how accurate an $11 indicator might be. The methodology I used is pretty straightforward. I made an adapter that fits the 3 8 or 0.375 inch stem of the indicators that also fits neatly into my height gauge. A drawing is included in the link below this video. I attached each indicator to the holder and lowered the height gauge to preload each indicator to zero with its point touching the surface plate. Next, the indicator measuring shaft was lifted and a height gauge was carefully slid underneath. The dial indicator shaft was carefully lowered onto the gauge block and the gauge block was slid back and forth to get a good reading. The value was recorded and the dial was rechecked for zero. As a side note, in the United States there is a common standard for dial indicators called AGD, which stands for American Gauge Design. All dials must have a .375 inch stem and there are five groups that are used to classify dial size. Group 0 dials are between 1 and 1 and 3 eighths inch in diameter. Group 1 are 1 and 3 eighths to 2 inches. Group 2 are 2 to 2 and 3 eighths inches. Group 3 are 2 and 3 eighths to 3 inches. Finally, group 4 indicators have a face diameter between 3 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. Threads for the contact point are spec'd at number 4 with 48 threads per inch. Unusual and hard to match. <laughs> Each dial must support at least two and a half turns of needle rotation to allow for preloading. There are several other standards out there as well, such as ANSI, DIN, US Mill, JIS, and ISO. The metric standards specify an 8mm stem versus the approximate 9.5mm for the 3 8 inch stems, and they include threads that are M25. A great introduction can be found in the website longislandindicator.com, one word. As you will discover, the actual text of various specifications only is available for a fee and then often can't be shared without legal repercussions. Wouldn't it be great if all standards were open? I think I'll leave that argument for another time. So let's go. So the Shars shootout. How does the Shars indicator compare to much more expensive Michutoyo, SPI, I have Fowler, Yuasa, some Michutoyo Digital. Uh, so let's uh, check this out. So I made this adapter out of tool steel. To fit in my stand. I still have to make the thumb screw for it, so for now I gotta deal with a Phillips screw. It's made out of tool steel. If you're wondering how to make this adapter, I put uh, instructions, a uh, draw, set of drawings for it on the uh, links below this video. So, standard procedure is preload each of the indicators to zero. Block off the stand. Make any final adjustments. Then using my HDT carbide. My HDT carbide uh, height gauges. I place a measurement so you notice uh, one full set of revolutions and on the zero. One on the money. Dropping down to point 0.9. Point 0.9 on the money. Point eight. Point eight on the money. Point seven. Point seven on the money. Point 
1.6 on the money. This is a $15 indicator from Shars. 0.5 on the money. Point four on the money. Point three. Point three on the money. Notice it's going back to zero each time. Point two. Point two on the money. A tiny bit, maybe half a ten thousandth below. Now, how about we drop down to 0 0.110, and we're a little tiny bit high, um, maybe a ten thousandth, maybe two. One oh nine. That's a tiny bit high, maybe a tenth high. That's eight. That one's just maybe half a tenth high. Seven, right on the money. Six, right on the money. Five, right on the money. Four, right on the money. Jumping down to point one. Right on the money. And my smallest gauge block, fifty thousands, is about one or two tenths short of fifty thousandths. Point four nine nine eight, point four nine nine nine. So I think you can see that the Shars did pretty darn well, especially for the price. I did mention uh, when I was actually making the video of the measuring um, a higher price because that's what I paid, but Shars has even lowered the price more. Um, Check out the Excel spreadsheet. I also have them in PDF formats uh, if you're interested to see. I also have some indicators that are less than an inch and one that's two inches. Uh, check out the values. See if uh, you think they fare equally. And again, remember that most of the dial indicators that I'm comparing to are used from eBay. Um, I think they all do really well. Uh, I think I could use any of them. Uh, the amazing part is that I can use the ones from Shars that cost a lot less. Hopefully this helps. Have a great night or a great day. See you later.